such a beautiful day It's such a beautiful day in the neighborhood day happy first day of october halloween month Woo! that's anus the menace with our theme song for both of our shows because just such a great song um i'm michael this is uh my right hand emotional support clown over here crusty she's the newsroom i'm the rant room she gives me news and i rant about it that's pretty much the, the whole format well, sometimes i rant too sometimes she rants too but I, just, I pretty much... Well, sometimes I do news, too. All right. Yeah. Well, our, our departments bleed over. But that's basically the format. We have, we have our morning We're coffee. We're diplomatic about our um, individual responsibilities. Yes. It's a great way of saying it. But uh, we, uh, guys, we're so busy. Warm yeah. We're so busy with all the crazy stuff going on in our witch communities that we can barely have time to talk about the news on our other show. So... We decided to start this other one uh, because you just you just can't bottle this shit up. You've got to rant about it. Yes, and I, I'm just seeing um, human behavior and how it devolves on a macrocosmic level and a microcosmic level, and it's I, I see I'm seeing a lot of parallels, same kind of behavior, same kind of hysteria. Um, and it's kind of an interesting, you know, kind of depressing, but it's a um, fascinating human experiment. Yeah. And the same thing is happening in our political arena. I think a whole lot of news must happen around noon or something, or at least yesterday. It's like as soon as we got off the air, uh, we had so much material. <laughs> Barely had to look at much today at all, but uh, there's so much happened yesterday in the uh, impeachment landscape which is dominating our news yeah well first of all um the whistleblowers attorneys are making it very clear that he wants to be anonymous and that the law affords that and he's allowed to be anonymous and they just keep saying it and saying it and saying it and then trump has some press conference and he's asked about it, and he's like, yeah, we're trying to find out who that is. Just like, just, I, I, I don't know, he, he thinks he's the state. You know, he keeps saying treason, and uh, what else? But that's, the main, that's the main buzzword, but, um, you know, he's trying to act like it's a treasonous act, and he thinks he's the state. He's the one committing treason against the state, and they are doing their jobs by protecting the state. And he's just so screwed up that he thinks anything against him is anti-patriotic and against this country. Yeah. I, I, I just, I don't, nobody sat him down and explained the job requirements to him. Yeah, I, I seem to recall a, a broader scope of his treason uh, threats. There was a bunch of people he wanted to put him on. It well, reminded me of Stalin. It's mostly Schiff. And um, the whistleblower. And I just wanted to say, I'm looking for the story, but um, 
you know, a big part of this problem I'm seeing is exactly what they think is our problem. Yeah. It's their media. You know, Fox, I, you know, to me, Fox is a, a total piece of crap. But yeah. to a lot of Americans, Fox is not some fringe group, you know, like it's a major news network. And when they report on something, their listeners assume that it's... You know, they're they're telling them the truth and and they're calling us fake because we're saying something different from what, you know, they're saying. And I'm just trying to find I had this I had this article but it's where um oh here. Fox pundits squawk about government overthrow in impeachment inquiry. And you know they they have a Big names, you know, they talked to Newt Gingrich, who's a former Speaker of the House. You know, again, not, I mean, I, I think the man's insane, but he's not some like, you know, he's not like Alex Jones or something. And so the subhead here says, Newt Gingrich and Lou Dobbs cry coup d'etat about the legitimate process unfolding against Donald Trump in the Ukraine whistleblower scandal. So they're sitting here acting like, what... Con- the House is doing is illegal, and as far as I can see, this these proceedings and the report has been more by the book than any other impeachment proceedings that we've had. Not that we've had a lot, but they're totally doing everything by the book. And here's Fox saying, it's a coup d'etat. So I'm just going to read the story and then I'll, I'll play the audio. A pair of Fox talking heads blasted the House impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump in the Ukraine whistleblower scandal on Monday. Lou Dobbs of Fox Business called the probe into Trump's alleged pressuring of Ukraine's president for re-election help, quote, an outright premeditated effort to subvert and overthrow the president of the United States. That's kind of a big accusation. And then he said, my God, it's what... My God, it's what was going on against President Trump as a candidate. Then it was special counsel. And now this? Dobbs, in an interview with Rep. Matt Gates, who's a Republican from Florida, railed at the national media as, quote, unrelenting, anti-Trump, anti-democratic in this country. And then he said, there must be a countervailing force against these acts of evil. Earlier in the day, Newt Gingrich, a Fox News contributor and former House Speaker from Georgia, trotted out a similar right-wing talking point on Fox personality Sean Hannity's radio show. Gingrich said, this is not an impeachment process. This is a coup d'etat. Gingrich, echoing Trump, also called the impeachment probe a witch hunt in an essay for Fox News. Gingrich dismissed the mushrooming investigation into Trump's July phone call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in which Trump repeatedly asked Zelensky to investigate Joe Biden and his son. Monday's developments include reports that Secretary of State Mike Mike Pompeo was in on the call. Meanwhile, House investigators subpoenaed Trump lawyer uh, Rudy Giuliani. Quote, This has nothing to do with impeachment, Gingrich said. This has nothing to do with the rule of law. This has nothing to do with facts. So we have our former Speaker of the House saying this on a major news network to the American people. And I just want to play the audio. Newt Gingrich isn't in this audio. It's Dobbs and that... um, No, the Republican rep from uh, Florida. Uh, What's his name? Well, let, let's not repeat his name, but I'm gonna. Yeah, this is a really short clip, so there's no commercials. Just make sure it's turned on high enough. Our, our low-tech method. Yeah. I don't see how you, any part of it you can take seriously. I don't understand why the Republican conference is just uh, uh, absolutely uh, outraged at what is going on because it is so clear that this is a joke from from front to back. Uh, from top to bottom, whether you're talking about the the pretext for it, the the narrative that was spun up by the CIA officer. Are you kidding me, Congressman? CIA officer spying on the president, spying on Americans in America? Isn't there a little problem with that? 
Well, they, they weren't even spying directly. They were apparently spying on the water cooler conversation because they weren't actually privy to any firsthand discussions. They're reporting now to do all so. the American people are. Right, but it's just like, you know, this is how the deep state operates. They get each other all spun up with their little theories and their little attacks on yeah. the institution of the presidency. And, and then there are these bombastic initial claims. Oh, Trump is a Russian agent. Trump pressured the Ukrainians. Yeah, I, I, well, then you but, learn. You know, Russian agent I don't believe was, for a was moment a joke. they're spinning each other up. This is a plot. This is an outright premeditated effort to subvert and overthrow the president of the United States. My God, it's what was going on against President Trump as a candidate. Uh, then it was, uh, if, you know, the special counsel, Spygate itself as president, and now this, because the little darlings are in the minds of some in the, in the national media, they're disappointed. I don't think they're disappointed at all. I think they're unrelenting anti-Trump, uh, anti-democratic government in, in, in this country. Well, and you can show how unrelenting they are when you expose the lack of shame. When the fact that the Russia hoax was exposed for what it was, there was no apology. They just literally went to the country yeah. next door You're in right. the Ukraine to try to create some new magical opportunity for them to delegitimize the presidency. And look, yeah. we had fun making that video, Lou, but there is nothing funny about the fact that Democrats in Congress are undermining our country when President Trump is trying to get more fair trade deals. He's trying to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. He's trying to stave off war with Iran. We require a then strong president go. and a strong presidency to do those things. Then I hope that uh, the Republican conference will this time uh, muster the sufficient energy and uh, outrage to do something about it. Uh, they must. There must be a countervailing force against this. Uh, these acts of evil, uh, and that's up, as you well know, to your conference, Congressman. Great to see you. Thanks so much. Congressman Matt you. Gates, and again, thanks for that terrific... You know, what i got to say right away, um, if this was a premeditated plot, it was nice of Trump to go along with the plot and commit illegal acts while being spied on. So he, he apparently, he must have, if it was a premeditated plot, he must have been involved in the plot because he had to commit the act that they were spying on him, hoping he would commit. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and... Uh, one thing I, I, I've really been thinking about a lot, and I was talking to you about it um, yesterday, I think Mitch McConnell is a lot more involved in, I, mean, I think there's a lot we don't know um, about what's going on behind the scenes. I think McConnell is deeply involved in whatever the hell Trump is doing, because just going along with, I, I think... I think it all goes back to when Scalia died and we all thought Obama was going to pick the next um, Supreme Court justice like he's supposed to by law. And Mitch right away said, no, 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 we're going to have the next president pick it. And as obscene as that was, I think the Democrats went along with it because they thought Hillary was going to win. And they were like, OK, well, Obama's picking a moderate in the middle. Hillary's going to pick somebody more left, so if Mitch wants the next president to pick the justice, we'll go along with it. So they went along with it, but Mitch knew that Trump was going to win. Against all odds, you know, against all the polls, somehow, by some miracle, Trump pulled off a win. I think he knew. And yeah. watch my back, because hopefully nobody's going to shoot me for saying this. Oh, I, I think so, too. And then... <clears throat> So as we're going through all this, we're finding out about, um, you know, our, our president getting all gangster on uh, Ukraine and trying to, you know, uh, make them an offer they can't refuse. Um, apparently, he had done the same thing to Australia. It's now come out yesterday, right after we got off the air. Uh, he asked Australia to uh, to help him um, to refute the uh, Russia probe. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything about a quid pro quo deal. Um, nobody's mentioned that, so he might have just straight up asked him for help for yeah. some reason, which is still the, yeah. which is just as illegal as if it were a quid pro quo. And that's the other funny thing: all the Republicans are saying, "Oh, there was no quid pro quo in that co conversation." It doesn't matter. Just asking another leader to do that, regardless of whether or not you have anything to leverage, is illegal and grounds for an uh, impeachment inquiry. And it was Barr brokering the deal. 
And then there's, I believe, Britain, Italy, and France. I don't remember there, the exact yeah. countries, but that, that sounds about right. I remember Italy was in there, and yeah, yeah. yeah. They get all these countries to uh, help him interfere with the investigation against him. Now, I don't know. That sounds illegal. <laughs> it's definitely wrong. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's illegal. It's obstruction, again, um, beyond simple obstruction. And it sounds like a man who's got something to hide. Yeah. And why is he not releasing his tax returns, which every other person running for president has done? And now he's uh, suing the state of New York because they're trying to get his tax returns, so he's suing them to stop them from getting his tax. Like, who's going to go to such lengths if he has just a, a normal tax return? Obviously, he didn't pay shit. And so now that he's got Barr in there, I read this. Jeff Bezos. I read this story that he uh, he had the DOJ open an investigation into uh, Hillary's emails. I may have said that one yesterday, but it's it's. Still pretty fucking funny. <laughs> Going back to the emails now. But now, now he's got his puppet in there, so maybe they can manufacture something. You know, I, I'm what sure. Uh, Barr. Oh you know. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like Barr's been a puppet before he even was named Attorney General. Because some of the stuff that is coming out now that Barr was involved in, that was when Sessions was the AG. So I don't. I'm not. I'm trying to like make sense of this timeline. I don't know who Barr was and why he was so involved in all this stuff before he was even promoted to that position. And Giuliani threw Pompeo, Secretary of State, under the bus, uh, and now he got a subpoena too. So Giuliani's got a subpoena. uh, uh, And Pompeo, like when all this stuff first came out, Pompeo was asked about the phone call, and he said, oh, I haven't seen... I haven't seen the uh, transcript, the summary, or the tra- like. No, they released the summary, and Pompeo, his answer to everything was like, "Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. You were on the actual call, so that was a cover up." Now, maybe more complicated with the sec- uh, Secretary of State, but uh, both these guys are making sounds like they're not going to honor uh, the subpoenas. Um, now. If Giuliani doesn't honor the subpoena and doesn't get hauled away in fucking handcuffs, um, our turkey's way too far away. What do we got? This is what I was going to read yesterday. Okay. But you can read it. Okay. You can take turns. All right. Let's see. Let's see. This is something we really should have read yesterday. It's kind of more of a um, general summary of everything. But I saw it yesterday, so there's definitely more news today. But it kind of, it kind of gives you an idea of how far the rabbit hole goes down. There's so many players that whose names I haven't heard in months, and they're coming up, and they were a part of some scheme, and it, it's just crazy. Okay, go. All right. Let's see. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff announced he's reached a deal for the whistleblower to testify. Uh, he also announced his committee is going after the Putin-Trump phone calls. Uh, that's good. Uh, Team Putin. Trump surrogates were a disaster on Sunday news shows with hosts um, not buying the Kremlin propaganda they were spinning in their cover-up about Trump, Giuliani, Barr, and Pompeo's Ukraine scandal that sparked the House to move forward on impeachment. Giuliani, Stephen Miller, Rep. Jordan were among the A-team that had meltdowns on air while they refused to answer questions asked of them. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's right out of the playbook, isn't it? Don't answer the questions. And, and, you know, if you do, make sure and lie. And just keep lying. And keep lying and keep lying and keep lying and say you were treated very, very unfair. No. Trump had a meltdown on Twitter as a result. That always happens. I wonder if this is a different... Oh, no, this is... I think this is the, the, the same meltdown we talked about before. Yeah, I didn't read it, though. Yeah. But I just, from memory, During a six-hour period, he tweeted tw- 31 times, 
20 of which included retweeting random Twitter accounts, including some that appeared to be egghead bots. He then tweeted some more aggressively attacking Democrats and zeroing in on Schiff. Uh, Kurt Volker agreed to testify before the House Committee about Ukraine uh, and developments that surround it. News reports also confirm that how Volker, as a volunteer U.S. envoy to Ukraine, still served the BGR firm and McCain Institute, both of which made money from the 2017 Javelin arms deal sold to Ukraine. Many who know Volker said um, he's very credible and will make a good witness. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Wow. So many people. Now, if Biden had a connection to the Javelin sales, and that was one of the things that Trump was holding back on with Ukraine, maybe he's trying to fuck with Biden that way too. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, New reports broke out about two additional private lawyers who worked with Giuliani for Trump on his Ukraine scandal and how they helped go after Trump's opponents. The husband and wife team, known to peddle conspiracy theories that attacked the FBI, seemed to have tried to force fake testimony regarding the former general prosecutor of Ukraine, Shokin, who is in the middle of Giuliani's fake uh, Biden accusations. Let's see. The most recent former Ukraine general prosecutor, Lutsenko, who Giuliani met with earlier this year to get this Biden conspiracy launched, uh, reported to the press that he told Giuliani there was no evidence that Joe Biden or Hunter Biden did anything wrong and confirmed what others already reported, that the company Hunter served on was not under investigation when Republicans falsely claimed it was. Not that it matters because Vice President Biden only acted in the interest of the U.S. and in partnership with Western governments, the IMF, World Bank, and in support and solidarity with pro-democracy Ukrainians. (sighs) What the media isn't connecting uh, the dots on is Henry Kissinger. After Giuliani was forced to cancel his trip to Armenia to attend a Kremlin-backed event, with Putin's good friend, both Pompeo and Barr went to Italy. Ivanka and Jared were in Italy for a wedding on the 20th, and it's not clear if they were still there this weekend. But there were reports of Russian oligarchs, yachts, private planes in Italy these past two days, which is not necessarily uncommon. Why is Henry Kissinger meeting with Pompeo today significant? Kissinger is a close ally and advisor to Putin. That's A. Okay, A. (laughs) B. Kissinger serves as a chairman of a D.C.-based Kremlin front organization run by a Russian agent, Dmitry Symes, who helped write the American First foreign policy speech that the UAE and the Saudis helped edit. It was Trump's only foreign policy speech of the campaign and delivered at the Mayflower in April 2016 with Russian spy ambassador Kislak in the uh, front row and shortly after Manafort joined his campaign. Oh, hey, we're supposed to take turns. Here, we're up to see. Kissinger was vital in normalizing Trump and also normalizing Kushner's role in the White House. Remember that Forbes December 2016 puff piece on Kushner that gave him credit for Trump winning the White House and mentioned but downplayed Cambridge Analytica, never mentioned Bannon? The real reason for that article was to validate Kushner as a vital advisor to Trump to normalize his soon-to-be-announced position in the White House, since it was pure nepotism and corruption, as well as a massive national security breach, giving Kissinger failing to pass a security... Oh, I'm sorry, giving Kushner failing to pass a security clearance. Everyone quoted in the story, Peter Thiel, Eric Schmidt, Schmidt, Kissinger, who praised Jared had a Putin connection. D. Kissinger spoke out against the Russian probe, Russia probe, numerous times. E. Kissinger had an unscheduled visit to the White House on May 10, 2017, 
The same day, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov and Kislyak had a secretive meeting in the Oval Office with Trump during which no Americans were allowed, only a Russian photographer. And when Trump gave the Russians intel and told him he wasn't concerned about Moscow's hybrid warfare against the U.S., and he laughed with them, all which took place the day after he fired FBI Director James Comey due to the Russia probe. Remember, that's when he was laughing and saying, yeah. oh, I don't care if you interfered. Yeah. F. Kissinger has been connected to Putin's favorite American political operative, Paul Manafort, at least since the Reagan administration. Reagan's campaign manager, William Casey, worked with Manafort on the campaign. After the election, Casey was appointed CIA director and worked with Kissinger on overseas political warfare tactics to combat the spread of communism, of which Manafort helped with, among others. It's how Manafort ended up working for Marcos in the Philippines, who taught Manafort dirty and deadly political tricks. G. Now, yeah, this is deep. Now, two days after Kissinger and Lavrov met to, discuss, met to discuss U.S.-Russia relations, Pompeo met with Kissinger to do the same. How exactly do these criminals define U.S.-Russia relations, and what are they conspiring, as House Democrats make clear they're going after the release of the Trump-Putin calls? This is a clear back channel and needs to be covered by the media. Finally, not, to men not mentioned in the press, while these Russian mafia criminals continue to conspire and work against U.S. interests, a young national hero, an American patriot, reality winner, so her name is reality winner, continues to be unjustly punished and is serving time in jail for warning her fellow Americans that Russia attacked the U.S. election at a time when Trump, Putin, and their cohorts denied it. In fact, to give you perspective of when and why she was so concerned, at 6.20 a.m. on May 9, 2017, Reality Winner took documents that were the most concrete evidence that Russia targeted our election systems. That afternoon, FBI Director James Comey was fired due to the Russia probe. The next day, Trump celebrated in the Oval Office with Putin's top two Russian officials. It was during this period that she tried to alert two news outlets anonymously. One we don't know, the other, The Intercept, which managed to protect Russian useful idiot Snowden, treated her information so carelessly, violating journalistic norms, that it provided the FBI the trail to connect it to her. The first order of business when the criminal is out of the White House should be to free, pardon, and honor reality winner. I never even heard of her. So much stuff. But hey. Kissinger? Yeah. Like, I thought that guy was like playing golf somewhere yeah. yeah all these people of ours or trump's uh hanging out with dictators and say hey i got your deep state Maybe right here marcos yes like when was the last time we thought about marcos yeah got your deep state right here and we'll be back Smoking and a pale ass, 
The Damned, showing us how far that rabbit hole goes. And we got another one from the newsroom. So, as expected, Pompeo is defiant. State Department officials won't show. Pompeo pushes back against deposition request in Ukraine probe. So, you know, this is a new trend now. Like, they don't care about subpoena. Like, things that, by law that we've all been following our entire lives now that this clown is in the White House, if they just don't feel like doing it, they won't do it. Like, remember Barr was subpoenaed and he had to like, tr- like they just don't do it. These are the, our representative. When do we call martial law and arrest these fools? Well, I, I, don't I don't think, have, think I don't they have understand. to call martial law. The House has their own police force and it could have been arresting people all this time and they're going to need that. and that's part of the problem yeah. they gave away the turkey and they're going to have to escalate everything now because these people they're just like oh subpoena shmapita i heard uh giuliani when they um subpoenaed him he was on fox news laughing about getting subpoenaed and was like oh they obviously don't know i'm an attorney what does that mean Attorneys can get subpoenaed, fool. I'm not an attorney, and I know that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, he's a private citizen. You know, yeah. uh, it may be difficult to just arrest a secretary of state or whatever the fuck yeah, he is. He's got but no yeah. role in the White House. Yeah. He's the president's private personal attorney. He I mean, is but not then, a government employee by any stretch. You just got to drag the trial out long enough till Trump's no longer president and can't pardon him and then convict him. Yep. So I'm going to read this story. Uh, U.S. Secretary of State wrote a fiery letter to House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Elliot Engel. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Tuesday sternly objected to a move by the U.S. House of Representatives to obtain depositions from five current and former State Department officials as part of an impeachment inquiry targeting President Donald Trump, accusing Democrats of bullying and intimidation. The five have been scheduled to give depositions this week and next, as the Democratic-led House looks into Trump's request to Ukraine's president to investigate a domestic political rival, Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden. Democrats last week launched an impeachment effort in light of a whistleblower complaint against the Republican president by a person within the U.S. intelligence community who accused Trump of soliciting foreign interference in the 2020 U.S. election for his personal political benefit. Trump, who is running for re-election next year... Uh, okay, I'm sorry, that, that, that was a bad break, that was a story... House Speaker Nancy Pelosi last week launched an impeachment inquiry into Trump over Ukraine, a step that could lead to approval of articles of impeachment or formal charges in the House. That would lead to a trial in the Senate on whether to remove Trump from office, 
but the president's fellow Republicans control that chamber and have shown little appetite for removing him. Pompeo, who is in Italy for a three-day trip, objected to a request by Democratic Representative Elliot Engel, chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, for the department to make the officials available for deposition. The officials include former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich, and former U.S. Special Representative for Ukraine, Kurt Volker. In a letter posted on Twitter, Pompeo told Engel, I am concerned with aspects of your request that can be understood only as an attempt to intimidate, bully, and treat improperly the distinguished professionals of the Department of State including several career foreign service officers whom the committee is now targeting. Pompeo said his department would respond to a Foreign Affairs Committee subpoena by Friday. Pompeo said proposed dates for the depositions do not provide adequate time for preparation and that the officials may not attend any depositions without executive branch counsel present to control disclosure of confidential information. He said records that have been requested are subject to restrictions relating to classified information and other executive branch privileges. Pompeo added that there is no legal basis for the committee's assertion that a failure to appear would constitute evidence of obstruction. Pompeo said that he would use, quote, all means at my disposal to prevent and expose any attempts to intimidate the dedicated professionals at the State Department. House Democrats did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Trump, in a July 25th phone call, asked Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, I should know this, how to pronounce this, Zelensky, to investigate Biden and his son Hunter in coordination with U.S. Attorney General William Barr and Trump's personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani. Biden's son had served as a director for a Ukrainian gas company. Pompeo also took part in the phone call between Trump and Zelensky, the Wall Street Journal reported, something likely to draw the attention of House investigators. Pompeo's letter marked the latest bid by Trump's administration to avoid providing House Democrats testimony and documents relating to numerous different investigations of the president. Democrats have accused Trump of a policy of stonewalling legitimate congressional inquiries. On Wednesday, three House committees, Intelligence, Foreign Affairs, and Oversight, were due to get a deposition from Yovanovitch, whom Trump labeled bad news during his call with Zelensky. On Thursday, the committees were set to get a deposition from Volcker, who resigned last week after the whistleblower named him as one of two U.S. diplomats who followed up with the Ukrainian officials a day after Trump's Zelensky call. The Zelensky call occurred after Trump froze nearly $400 million in aid attend intended to help Ukraine deal with an insurgency by Russian-backed separatists. Zelensky and the call agreed to investigate. The aid was later provided. No U.S. president has ever been removed from office using the impeachment process set out in the U.S. Constitution, though lesser officials have been removed. The whistleblower's identity has not been made public. Trump on Tuesday continued to assail the impeachment inquiry and defend his call with Zelensky. The president asked on Twitter... Quote, Why aren't we entitled to interview and learn everything about the whistleblower and also the person who gave all of the false information to him? End quote. But a senior Republican senator, Chuck Grassley, came to the defense of the whistleblower. Quote, this person appears to have followed the whistleblower protection laws and ought to be heard out and protected, Grassley said in a statement. Grassley also said media reports concerning the whistleblower's identity don't serve the public interest. A um, bunch of people reporting. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much going on. And I just got a, a new alert that kind of um, continues with what I read. It's a story about Chuck Grassley. 
GOP Senator Chuck Grassley defends Ukraine whistleblower amid Trump attacks. The veteran Republican, a longtime advocate of whistleblower safeguards, said the Trump complainant, quote, ought to be heard out and protected. Senator Chuck Grassley, Republican in Iowa, a longtime advocate of government whistleblower protections, issued an implicitly sharp rebuke of President Trump and his allies on Tuesday by voicing support for the Ukraine whistleblower. Quote, This person appears to have followed the whistleblower protection laws and ought to be heard out and protected, Grassley said in a statement released by his office. We should always work to respect whistleblowers' requests for confidentiality. Trump and his allies have repeatedly maligned the anonymous intelligence community's whistleblower's motives in recent days as the House impeachment inquiry intensifies. Over the weekend, the president accused the person of spying on him and suggested the whistleblower's sources ought to be executed. He also told reporters on Monday, quote, we're trying to find out the person's identity. Lawyers representing the whistleblower have expressed con concern for their client's safety, stressing the person is entitled to anonymity under the law. Republican lawmakers, meanwhile, have been trying to undermine the whistleblower's complaint, which alleged Trump asked the president of Ukraine to investigate 2020 election rival Joe Biden and Biden's son Hunter. They echoed the White House's own talking points in arguing the whistleblower isn't a real whistleblower because the person did not w uh, witness the president's actions firsthand. Quote, the definition of a whistleblower is somebody who has firsthand knowledge of the situation. So I think that we are given too much credence, or at least credit, to someone who does not meet the definition of a whistleblower, said Bill Cassidy of Republican Louisiana, told reporters last week, he's not said, Senator. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham, uh, we love him, uh, South Carolina, agreed, saying Sunday on CBS's Face the Nation, quote, we are not going to try the President of the United States on hearsay. But Grassley, who sees nothing wrong with Trump's July 25th phone call with the Ukrainian president referenced in the whistleblower's complaint, seemed to undercut both points. He urged everyone not to make judgments or pronouncements without hearing from the whistleblower first and carefully following up on the facts, cautioning the speculation about their identity by politicians and media commentators doesn't serve the country's interests. He also pushed back against claims made by his GOP colleagues about the complaint, which was deemed credible by both Trump's Director of National Intelligence and the Intelligence Community Inspector General. The distinctions being, brawn, uh, being drawn between first and second-hand knowledge aren't legal ones, Grassley said. It's just no part of whistleblower protection law or any insurgent agency policy. Complaints based on second-hand information should not be rejected at hand, but they do require additional legwork to get at the facts and evaluate the claim's credibility. <coughs> the Iowa Republican has spent decades advocating on behalf of whistleblowers. In 2015, he founded the Senate, the Senate Whistleblower Protection Caucus to raise awareness for the need for protection against retaliation of private sector and government employees who call attention to wrongdoing. Grassley is the first Republican member of the group to speak out in defense of the whistleblower. Senator Ron Johnson, um, R. Wisconsin, another member of the caucus, said that what really concerned him was that the whistleblower complaint was leaked in the first place. I'm a big supporter of whistleblower protection. Who should not be protected is whoever leaked... Wait. I'm a big supporter of whistleblower protection. Who should not be protected is whoever leaked this. If this whistleblower leaked this, then this person does not deserve whistleblower protection. <clears throat> Johnson told the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel last week. Wait, who's this? Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. News of the whistleblower's complaint first broke last month after Trump's Justice Department blocked intelligence officials from giving it to Congress as required by law. The DOJ decision was not made public until after the complaint was released. Senator Tom Tellis, Republican North Carolina, 
another member of the caucus who has praised whistleblowers for having the courage to speak out, told, whistle, uh, told reporters last week he was trying to figure out whether or not the person who is called the whistleblower is actually a whistleblower as described by the statute. The North Carolina Republican is facing a primary challenge ahead of his re-election bid next year. Stephen Kahn, the top whistleblower attorney, called Republican complaints about second-hand information in the Ukraine complaint completely distorted. Quote, For example, someone overhears a conversation about committing a murder or robbery. You can report that conversation even though you never witnessed the crime. The conversation is important ev evidence in as much as it can provide law enforcement with the tip needed to investigate or solve a crime. This happens every day, Khan said. So all these people, Republicans, who in general support whistleblowers are saying, well, we don't know if this is actually a whistleblower. This okay. is where our <laughs> devolved into. Yeah. And it's this ridiculous game on all sides Trump admitted to it everything the whistleblower accused him of doing he admitted to it in print and in uh, in speech he had said it and Giuliani admitted it um, the whistleblower had a great report and was a great writer and you know put his case really clearly and the case is accurate so they can go on and on trying to discredit the whistleblower the The information has already been uh, admitted to. All right, we, we got one more um, before we go do other things. The one that's not about Trump. Amber Geiger is found guilty of murder in the shooting death of Botham Jean in his apartment. This is the unarmed black guy sitting in his apartment shot by a white cop eating that sits yeah, eating ice cream, watching TV, shot by uh, a white cop that said she thought she was in her own apartment. And Dallas... She was in She was in uniform, so it's not like, you know, she was out drinking with her friends and, you know, accidentally mistook his apartment for her apartment. It was on a different floor. You know, we live uh, in a building with multiple floors. I've never gotten out on the wrong floor. Um, it, it's, it's ridiculous. And you yeah. know, they usually acquit. And the yeah. fact that they found her guilty means that the evidence was just overwhelming. I think that's that bee from yesterday that liked your coffee so much. Yeah. He's trying to get some more. I had to rescue that bee out of your coffee. Don't don't get back in there, you fool. Pollinate some shit. All right, anyway, um, from CNN, a Dallas jury on Tuesday found former police officer Amber Geiger guilty of murder for fatally shooting her unarmed neighbor, Botham Jean, in his own apartment, which she said she mistook for hers. Jury deliberated less than 24 hours. The verdict followed a trial that has captured national attention and sparked outrage. Judge Tammy Kemp asked Geiger and her lawyers to stand as she delivered the verdict. We, the jury, unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. Kemp read as a shriek and hand clap could be heard. No outbursts, Kemp said before announcing a break at 2 p.m. Eastern time. With the murder conviction, Geiger, 31, now faces up to life in prison. Jean's mother immediately threw both arms in the air and quickly retracted them. Another woman who started to shout in praise was chastised by a court officer. Members of Jean's family sobbed. There were hugs among family members and prosecutors after the jury left the courtroom. Uh, Geiger, head down, wept at the defense table. Her mother broke down in the courtroom. When the courtroom doors opened, applause and cheers erupted from the corridors. Uh, some cried on hallway benches and shouts of guilty, guilty, and Black Lives Matter could be heard. Outside the court later, S. S. Lee Merritt, an attorney for Jean's family, called a rare murder conviction against a police officer a huge victory, um, not only for the victim's family, but also for black people in America. When African Americans are killed by police, these lawyers get a call. It is a signal that the tide is going to change here, he told reporters. Police officers are going to be held accountable for their actions, and we believe that we will begin the change policing culture around the world. The change policing culture all over the world. That's hard to read. Um, another family attorney, Benjamin Crump, 
cited the names of numerous unarmed African Americans who have died at the hands of police. For so many unarmed black and brown human beings all across America, this verdict is for them, he said. The Jean family would have no comment until after testifying at the uh, sentencing phase later Tuesday, the attorney said. Geiger, who is white, testified that working long hours on September 6, 2018, she returned to her Dallas apartment complex and approached what she thought was her apartment. Uh, she noticed the door was partially open <coughs> and pulled out her service weapon and shot a figure inside in the dark. Turned out uh, she was at the apartment directly above hers, which belonged 26-year-old man Jean was black, and she thought Jean was an intruder. I just... I, Dallas doesn't really strike me as a very safe city. Where the fuck was the door unlocked, partially open? Well, I think it was his apartment, and he probably felt safe in his... You know, like, I would feel safe, like, not totally locking the door in my apartment if I was home watching TV. I know. Um, yeah, what? I, said, I don't. I wouldn't leave you unlocked at home watching TV. Well, not in my personal situation, but, you know, if I didn't have a stalker, it would be fine. But um, another thing, I remember when, when all this was happening, I'm, I'm trying to remember the details of it as it was uh, unfolding. I'm pretty sure he had a completely different welcome mat in front of his door. As she, It was like a different color and a different shape. And, you know, I'm sorry, that should have been a clue that maybe it's not your apartment. And maybe the door's a little open... And maybe the door is a little open because it's not your apartment. And the fact that it's a totally different welcome mat should be another clue. Um, Officers are supposed to have observation skills. A lot more detail that they talked about at the time when this was happening that that escapes me now. But there was just so much evidence that pointed to the fact that she knew exactly what she was doing. And I'm glad that the jury agrees with that. Like, for once... Justice. Although like, she hasn't been sentenced yet, like, what if they yeah. give her like probation? You know, like I, we don't even know what they're going to sentence her with. I think they're sentencing her later today. And she can't, you know, she she can't be sentenced to life. But I'm really shocked that they convicted her in the first place. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they just gave her a slap on the wrist. Yeah, that seems the new and she, normal. And she dyed her hair blonde before the testimony. Which That's interesting. Kind of yeah. She have more sympathy for blonde. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's probably true. All right. Well, it's been a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. We got to go do some beautiful day stuff. And uh, we'll be back tonight at uh, 5 p.m. talking about totally different shit on Wittershins. We are here on It's a Beautiful Day every uh, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the uh, Wittershins Broadcast Network. And then we're here every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for our regular Wittershins show where you can hear all of the crazy stuff that goes on in our crazy witch world. Oh, oh, and it'll be crazy tonight for sure. We'll see you next time. Have a beautiful day.